Okay, so let's check out some final math related questions from the 2017 New York State Chem Regents exams. So, while I already did a set of heat questions back in another video, another part, here's a couple more heat questions here. Then 18, if you notice, you have a percent by mass question. 19, we're dealing with concentration, solution concentration. 20, pH. 21, another pH. And then 22, pH is acid-base chemistry. So is question 22, but this is a titration question. So, have reference table T open. Some of them you're going to use this some of them you're not come up with your answers then come on back check answers and explanations please like my videos subscribe to the channel check out more videos and keep working hard so check these out okay so welcome back let's check it out for question 16 heat transfer you know it's always from hot to cold so, the test tube and the water. Right, so the water is hotter. Just check the temperature, 98 grams. Test tube is colder, right, 22. So water to the test tube. For 17, numerical setup, right, for the amount of thermal energy change for water. Of course, I went ahead and blocked this in the beaker. All right, so Q is equal to mc delta t right here on the reference table down here in the heat equations and there it is 320 grams 4.18 for liquid water you get that off the front of the reference table and delta t is 24 right the 98 was the temperature of the water to start and then it went down to 74 you're only showing the setup so you stop there Another one, 18, you're also showing a numerical set. So it's asking for a percent by mass of the potassium nitrate. And notice I underlined solution. Well, there's a reason. It's the part, which is the potassium nitrate, which is the 70, over the whole thing. Now, students will make a mistake here. Solution, remember, is solute, which is the potassium nitrate, and the solvent, which is the water. So it's 170 here in the denominator. That's the whole thing. And don't forget times 100. You're done. That's all you're looking for. Numerical setup. Now, question 19 has to do with parts per million. And once again, on the reference table, there is a parts per million equation. The fraction is set up just like percents. Right? Solute is the part. Solution is solute plus solvent, the whole thing. But instead of times 100, you're going to multiply by a million. So, dogs are barking. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, for 19, we're dealing with parts per million. So, here is the equation, as I already showed you. The mass of the solute, that's the silver chloride, is the 1.2 times 10 to the minus... I'm not sure I can see that. Hold on one sec again. 1 times 10, I believe, to the minus 3. The quality is not so great. I apologize. I scan these things as best I can. Over 800 grams of solution. So that includes the 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. But the key is you're going to divide. And don't forget, you have to multiply by a million to get the answer. And the answer was, I think, 1.2 parts per million. Okay, it didn't mess it up. It is one and a half parts per million. And I did check it is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. All right, now, for 20 and 21, there is no formula or equation on a reference table T. When I'm dealing with pH, Right, the pH scale. Everybody knows neutral is 7. Less than 7 is acidic. Greater than 7 is basic. But 
what happens when you move up and down the scale. Well, in this case, if we decrease by one pH unit, we're going from seven to six. We actually are going from neutral to acidic. So what's happening to the hydrogen ion concentration? It's going to increase by a factor of 10. So that's a tenfold increase for choice one. So with each unit that the pH goes down, the hydrogen ion concentration increases by 10. If it's going the other way, if the pH unit is going up, then it decreases by a factor of 10. The other thing to remember is that the hydrogen ion and hydronium ion, H3O+, plus, are used interchangeably. Because H3O plus is just water and H plus. Take a look at 21. Same thing, right? I start with a pH value of 7, and then I have a solution with a thousand times greater hydronium ion concentration. So for every unit I move down, the hydrogen ion, which is the same as the hydronium ion, is increasing by a factor of 10. So we're going from 7 to 6, that's times 10, 6 to 5 times 10, and then 5 to 4. 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand times. So that's why it's a pH of 4. Use your number line for this. Draw it out so you see it. Don't do it in your head, do it on paper. Finally, for 22, you have a neutralization reaction that is going on between an acid and a base. The process is called titration. The equation is on the reference table. The titration equation is right here. It's labeled as titration equation. Molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. So in this case, I had 5 milliliters of a 2 molar NaOH. So what I do for this, write down the equation, and then I usually put HCl as my acid, and AOH is my base. Remember there are reference tables that list acids and bases, and then I go ahead and fill in. My concentration of my acid is what I'm looking for. The volume of the acid, 10 mils. On the other side, the molarity of the base was 2 molar and 5 mils. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1, and that's why the answer is choice 1. Check out more videos on YouTube under NewYorkChemCoach.com. Give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't subscribed. Also check out NYChemCoach.com. And keep working hard and good luck.